The challenge for this video is simple. Can I escape the final version of Hades Vault without using a mouse or the equivalent? The answer is yes, of course I can. So let's begin. I'm in the Hades Vault world right now and I already have my full escape kit. A few explosives, a water bucket, a bed, a boat, some apples, and of course, grass. The grass is gonna be very important, trust me. So like I said, I can't use my mouse. The only thing I have access to is my keyboard. I wish I could just turn around to escape, but I can't. I can't rotate the camera. What's worse is my yawn pitch is exactly zero zero, which means I'm looking straight forward and I can only break or place blocks on one axis. Wait, but Ken, break or place blocks how? You don't have access to your mouse. Well, you're right, but just like in my last challenge, I have access to the control screen. Using tab, I can go to options, then click on controls, and then go down to the left, middle, and right click buttons. I'm going to replace them with the left arrow key, the up arrow key, and the right arrow key. Now I can use WASDA to move and the arrow keys to place in brick blocks. But of course, to place anything at all, I need a block in front of me to place it on, so we're gonna have to go behind Hades Vault. So we're here at the back of Hades Vault, and um, you may think I could just start mining in, you know, but the problem I'm going to reach is that I have to try and get through the wither walls without moving my camera, which is surprisingly difficult, and even if I do get through them, the guards will be able to hear me mining, and I can only dig in a straight line, making it really easy for the guards to catch me, and if they do catch me, how am I supposed to fight them without a mouse? So mining straight into Hades Vault will do me no good, instead we have to try and find an alternate route, and I have. You see, we like to make a lot of fun of Guardian's Vault for being, you know, completely full of dirt. Well, here's a fun fact about Hades Vault. The entire base is made out of dirt, too. And if you look at slots 6 and 7 of my hotbar, you can probably guess what my escape plan is. Okay, so I've made it directly below the cell, and now I want to use a respawn glitch to get myself inside the cell. The problem is, 99% of the time when you place a bed in Minecraft, you're either looking down at the top of a block, or you're placing it at an angle on the side. But I'm looking straight forward, and even if I could place the bed, my room is only two blocks tall, so the bed would be obstructed. To make the space I'm sitting in taller, I'd have to break the obsidian, but I can't do that with explosives, and I can't move up my camera to mine it. So naturally, there's only one way to do this we have to summon a wither. Okay, but now we reach another problem about having no mouse. If I place the skulls here, the wither isn't going to spawn because of that soul sand block right there. I could try removing those blocks with explosives, but if I do, most likely I'll destroy the entire... Yep. So basically, if I can't rotate my camera, I can't escape. But hope isn't lost yet, because despite not having a mouse, I can still rotate my camera. First thing I want to do, since I've blown up so many dirt blocks, if I middle click the dirt, I'll get it into my hotbar. Now my plan with the dirt is pretty simple. We're gonna touch grass. First, I'll place the dirt blocks in a long pattern just like this, such that there's three air blocks right here. Then I'm gonna place three blocks of grass. In the back, I'm going to blow up this area with a respawn anchor. And now I just have a platform with three floating blocks of grass. See, normally in Minecraft, when you place a block, you'll place it on top of the block you're looking at, but it's different with grass. When I place this bed on the grass, it'll destroy the grass blocks. And now if I sleep in this bed, I'll wake up facing 180 degrees the other direction, since you'll always respawn looking towards your bed. Now that's just a demonstration, so allow me to break the bed and I'll show you an even better way to abuse this. If I place my dirt blocks in this orientation with one dirt block right here, and the two grass blocks right here. Then if I place my bed, the only valid respawn point will be in the corner. And when I sleep in the bed this time, I'll respawn facing diagonally. And this is huge because the whole time I've only been able to place blocks on one axis and now I can place them on two. Just as a quick example, look how easily I can break the bed I just placed. Now I can simply come back to the area where I was trying to summon the wither, place some dirt blocks in a straight line like this until I get all the way to here. Middle click the soul sand to get my soul sand back, place three like this, and then place the wither skeleton skulls. Now at this precise moment that the obsidian was finally destroyed, I now had enough room to do the squilly glitch. But now obviously, I have a bigger problem, and it's right in front of me. Okay, now I just need a way to get rid of the wither. Does it even see me? Oh, it does! Now that the wither is finally dead, I'm going to use my water and some careful block placing to set up the position where my respawn point will be. Now I'll place the grass here and the bed here. There we go. And now I have the opportunity to show you another very cool trick. This entire time I've only been using items from my hotbar. That's because how am I supposed to get things out of my inventory when I can't move my mouse? Well, there's actually one spot in your inventory you can take from, and that's this one right here. When you open the inventory, your mouse is already highlighted on this upper center block. And of course, I can use the number keys to put it into my hotbar. I'm going to use the slab to bypass Hades Vault's two block tall respawn glitch prevention, and it has a second purpose of allowing me to place a boat by waterlogging the slab and placing the boat on the side of the water. Now my respawn glitch setup is complete and all I have to do is go to the end and I can get to the cell. Well I've replaced the end portal at the proper coordinates in the seed and the closest end portal is um, this direction. So yeah, uh, 
Don't mind me, I'm just gonna be walking backwards for the next 30 minutes. Bye, Hades Ball! So we've now entered the end, and all I have to do- Oh. Oh shoot. I forgot to kill the Ender Dragon. That's fine. I got this. Do a bit of parkour to place a block there, two here. Now I can swim up with the water. One block at a time. Now, my plan to destroy these end crystals is pretty simple. We just have to do this water trick up all of these towers, and then I can use a respawn anchor to blow it up. Alright, that's one out of ten. I think I can actually do this. I'm gonna kill the ender dragon without using my mouse. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. It's dropping again! What the heck? Do I have like a plugin installed? Oh, 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 wait, 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 how do I MLG without- I discovered multiple Minecraft tricks, slept through several days, killed two Minecraft bosses, all just to imprison myself in Hades Vault. <sighs> I'm so stupid. Perfect, <laughs> it's finally dead. Now all I have to do is drop in, place the respawn anchors, try and destroy the bed. The alarm can sound all at once. It's too late. Wait a minute, can I summon a wither? <gasps> I can summon a wither. And now I can set myself free too. Now all I have to do is get my friend to break my bed. And just like that, I've escaped Hades vault without using a mouse. Thank you for watching.